stay victorious. We are born to reign. He has made us kings and priests. That we shall reign on the earth. Not roam on the earth. Revelation 5 verse 10. The top is our place in destiny. He said, that shall be above only. We are redeemed as victors, not as victims. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. To stand victorious in today's contest is employing supernatural instrument of vengeance to maintain the state and position of triumph over the devil and his agents against all that concerns us. Enough of sorrows and woes. I decree they will end today in your life. So, to stay victorious, we must be on the offensive. It says, from the days of John, Matthew 11, 12, the kingdom of God suffered violence and those who are ready to be violent will take what belongs to them by force. Satan is a brute. You don't use English to negotiate with him. To be on the offensive is to invoke the God of vengeance to act in our favor. And today, Maru Bredia, Kinsia, Lojanto Bredia, Every wickedness against your life and my life will come to an end right now. In Jeremiah 51 verse 6, the people say, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. This, this one, not after. He will rent down unto her a recompense. This is the time of the Lord's vengeance, not after. Today, I declare and I declare, God will strike everyone after your life and my life. Staying victorious is only possible when vengeance is executed speedily in your favor. In Luke chapter 18, 7 and 8, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. I tell you that he will avenge them what? Speedily. Nothing silences the adversaries like vengeance. Now hear this. Hear me. I want to caution you. Refuse to be religious in order not to be a victim. Refuse to what? Except there's another God you have. God is a two-sided God. God is what? He's a two-sided God. In 1 Samuel 2, 6. Look at what it says. It said the Lord killed. Many don't know that God kills and the Lord make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. So he has two sides. He can bless, he can cause. He can kill, he can give life. We only go for one side of God. That's why Christians have been molested. If you invoke the other side, nobody can toy with you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? God has blessed you, so you should know that hell will be angry. He can cause, he can also bless. <laughs> Today we're invoking the killing side of God. He said, I'm he. I will bless him that blessed thee. Genesis 12 verse 3. And I will cause him that cursed thee. So God is a blesser God and he's a cursed God. He was talking to Abraham. And in Galatians chapter 3 verse 29... If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. That means whatever he said to Abraham, he said to us. Today, whoever wants to cause you and I is caused in the name of Jesus. Anyone. Listen, I was preaching last year on the day like this, glory reign. Physically, in Ogoni land, Ogoni is a part of River State, a tree where they put people's name for evil caught fire. Physically, they showed it. As I was ministering here, the tree, they used it it's a demonic tree. Demonic. As I was ministering here, the tree of smoke was coming out of the tree, fire. And God the tree and they showed it on, 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 to us physically. People said, this tree? I was preaching on glory and on this, this kind of message. In a place called Ahoda, they would carry people's name and nail it to the tree and the people can never make progress. 
the physical fire caught the tree. Today, anywhere they've taken your name to curse you, I curse it in the name of Jesus. That shrine will catch fire as I'm talking. If you're a believer, say amen like a believer. In the name of Jesus. God is a curse of God. Jesus came. Now listen, people don't know about Jesus. They hear people say, did Jesus cause? Jesus caused the fig tree. Go and read your Bible. Jesus caused. He said, this tree, no man eat fruit of thee. Who, did, who spoke that? And Peter, in Mark, Mark, Mark chapter 11, Peter made a statement. He said, the tree with that corset, if you read verse 20 to 22, he said, he caused the tree from 12 to 14. Then, in verse 21, he said, Peter called to remember and said unto him, Master, behold, did the fig tree with that word? He used the word cause, so you are not holier than Jesus and God. If God cause, Jesus cause, Holy Ghost cause, who are you? And I, I don't believe in this kind of cause, he will kill you. If you want to die like a chicken, they don't believe in this kind of gospel. In this wicked world, this wicked world. When you say, God bless me, be ready to, to be also be on the offensive. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit also causes. One day Paul was preaching by the power of the Holy Ghost. And a man came to disrupt his preaching. The man's name was Elemas, the sorcerer. He was disturbing <laughs> in Acts chapter 13. And in verse 11, the Bible said, and Paul filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. You know why Paul called blindness? Paul himself, when he was called, was blind. So he knows how blindness is punishable. He said, I was blind for three days, so you your own for a lifetime. Since it can be a lifetime to be born and a time to die. He said, be blind for a season. When you see that kind of gospel, people will respect your gospel. Today, anyone who is disrupting the gospel of Jesus, I command them to go blind. <laughs> Life story. I was preaching in a small community called Edbeda. It was a notorious environment where some boys terrorized the environment. And I was, I was preaching. The, the community said I should come and dedicate the community because it was the end of Ikure land. The place was demonically demonic. This boy, as I was preaching, they were using something to clean his face. You know when somebody's arrogant to a fourth? I was I said, who are you? They say, it's the, it's the head of the military. I said, shut up! And I pointed my finger at him. I said, if you don't change, you are dead. You, you see call boys around him. He was doing with so much arrogance. I was speaking, they would use towel to clean his face. I said, where I'm preaching, you will distract me. I said, boy, if you in one month, he was, he was killed. This is a person who soldiers were afraid of. After I sentenced him and I said, if you don't take your time and don't repent, you are dead. I'm not here for fun. You come and destroy my body. The, the same blood don't enter him, entered him. All these people you see, they say they are strong. Nothing. When the charm leaves, nothing works. Now, anyone who is daring the God you serve, I declare them dead in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. So, vengeance is biblical. It is scriptural. It is scriptural to afflict vengeance upon the wicked. What is vengeance? Vengeance is God troubling our troublers. In 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 6, it says, It shall give tribulation, 2 Thessalonians 1 6. Sin is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. <laughs> so may everyone troubling my life. Say it will be troubled today. Say it like a child of God. God, give them multiply troubles. Everyone troubling me, give them troubles. In the name of Jesus. So vengeance is intense or extreme punishment afflicted on the evildoer in return for wrong done or intended. Oppression ends when the God of vengeance shows up. 
Now, for instance, Israel. God did everything for Pharaoh to let them go. He refused. Do you know there are some situations, if you like, appeal to the person, the person will never agree. Moses did everything. Pharaoh said, <laughs> I will see that God that will let you go. There are some people they will even tell you, let me see that God that will save you. Have you not happened with your challenge to your face and say, I will see the God who will save you. Pharaoh tormented Israel to that point. And then something happened in Exodus chapter 4, 22, 23. And thou shalt say to Pharaoh, just what I'm saying now. Don't see the Lord. It is a thus said. That means he's still speaking. Israel is my son. Are you a child of God? What he says to Israel, he says to you. We are New Testament Israelites. Even my firstborn, <laughs> and I said unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve him. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Every devil, an agent of the devil, that's vowed that you will not make progress. I decree today they go down. This day they go down. If you believe in same like a believer. In the name of Jesus. You will hear news by tomorrow morning. You will hear news by tomorrow morning. If you believe I shout the Lord Amen. We can stay victorious when we get the force of vengeance to destroy Satan, his agents and their works. Three key areas to execute vengeance. Three key areas to execute what? Vengeance. A. Vengeance against all forces of darkness. Vengeance against what? God will execute vengeance on our behalf against demonic forces targeted against us. In Isaiah 19 verse 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And I will destroy the counsel thereof. Exodus 12 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both men and beasts. And against, take note, and against the cause of Egypt. Against what? People think it was only Pharaoh. He said, against their gods. I will execute judgment on the Lord. Against their gods. Against what? Against the things they are boasting of. Today, every devil against you will be judged by God. Thunder will strike the charms, the evils they throw at you. It will return back to their heads. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Vengeance against human agents. Against what? Today, God will judge all armed robbers, kidnappers, militants, witches and wizards, cultists, assassins, ritual killers, head killers, and any person with evil intentions against you and I. In Psalm 101, verse 8. I will early destroy all the wicked in the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Sniff to right and say, every wicked man and woman against my life, against my children, today, they will be cut off. In two minutes declare, in the name of Jesus, they will be cut off today. Everyone against my life, today, they will be cut off. Everyone against my life, against my destiny, They'll be cut off now. They'll be cut off now. In the name of Jesus. They'll be cut off now. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Be ready because it's a long service. After today, you will not be seated again. No carryover. See, vengeance against evil works. Vengeance against what? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, 1 John 3, 8, that he might destroy the works of the devil, the be path. Spell, charms, enchantments, curses, 
demonic manipulations, etc. Fighting against your destiny are destroyed now. He yeah. said, surely there's no enchantment against Jacob. Numbers 23, 23. Neither is there any divination against Israel. <laughs> if they have taken my name and your name to anywhere <laughs> for evil, I decree thunder strike there now. Yeah. If they put our pictures or pictures of our children and our us for evil, thunder strike there now. Yeah. I'm speaking immediately that place will catch fire. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. In the name of Jesus. Life story. A young man came to me and said, Papa, <laughs> I can't believe what happened to me. I said, what is it? He said, do you know all I suffered last year was my younger brother? I said, how? He said, do you know he was having lumbar problem, back problem, problem, business, no, what was, everything was crashing. He said his own blood brother was taking his name from shrine to shrine. And he came for a service like this. Not, not up to this level, but a service like this. And I began to speak. He said, as I was speaking, immediately the brother was struck. As the brother was struck, he was free. Sickness left, body went. Then when the brother, he died suddenly, was when slowly began to come out. So he was going from shrine to shrine. He called the wife and said, come on, this is Ambiari, are they true? The wife of the brother. He said, it's true, your brother was taking your name to every place. I asked people, he said, my hands are clean. What did Abel do for Cain to hate him? Every evil work against you, as I'm speaking now, will return back to sender. <laughs> By the time you wake up in the morning, you will hear they are gone. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. In the name of Jesus. Reasons to be offensive in order to stay victorious. I'll give you reasons. I'll give you what? Why you should be on the offensive. Reasons to be what? Offensive in order to stay victorious. Number one. <laughs> Hell is stirred up after every promotion and advancement. After every promotion and advancement, hell is what? Stirred up. The moment Job was lifted, Satan came after him. Satan took advantage of Job's ignorance and buffeted, tormented him and so he suffered devastation. He suffered what? Because he was ignorant. He said the whole world lieth in wickedness. First John 5.19 Psalms 24 verse 20b, the darkness of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Everyone lifted by God is an envy of hell. <laughs> Wickedness is a global issue. You need to be on the offensive to keep the devil and his agents quiet. The best form of defense after every lifting is to be on the offensive through vengeance. Now hear this. Most of you didn't read the Bible. Do you know the moment David was anointed king, the Philistines came after him? Philistines rose against David after he was anointed king. First, second Samuel 5. Let me show you something. The moment they anointed the look, check the first problem you had was after you got the breakthrough. Don't if you are lifted, you that's when you know the forces against you. Just get one promotion. Ah, you see, hell will turn loose. That's why you must not be doing Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Amen. After you, you get up and say, nobody telling this word God has given to me. Look at 2 Samuel 5, 17, 19 and 20. Look at the scripture. Listen, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, do you hear that? All the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. The moment they said, David! And the they said, ah, go after him. And David inquired of the Lord, verse 19. Saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? Will that deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto him, David, go up. For I will doubtless deliver the Philistines to the hand. And David came to Balbirazim. 
And David smoothed them there and said, The Lord had broken forth upon my enemies before me as the bridge of waters. Therefore, he called the name of the place Baal Berazim. Today, all the forces that have risen against us because we have been blessed, they shall be broken to pieces. So be every force that intends to rise against me now that I'm blessed be broken to pieces. Said with faith, every force that wants to rise against me that because I've been lifted, I command in the name of Jesus, they'll be broken to pieces. He said, it shall dash them in pieces like a potter vest. I command whoever wants to attack us to be dashed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Two. To enjoy life and fulfill destiny. To enjoy what? The second reason why you should be on the offensive. In John 10.10, 10, the path. In Amplified Classics, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full, it overflows. To continually enjoy life, you must be on the offensive. You must be on the what? Psalm 101 verse 8. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Early. You don't wait till they come to attack you. Early. And we are doing it early. True? You are blessed on Monday. Now early. So before you start, hey, hey, hey. They are off. Say, so God created me to fulfill purpose. And no force will stop it. You hear me? Until vengeance has executed your favor, God's plan for your life may not be fulfilled. <laughs> That God told you something will happen. Don't fold your hands, oh brother. God told us, listen, I'm going to use this testimony to pray. God told us to start the cathedral. And the moment we went to fancy to start, hell turned loose. The then government came against us and said, we must not build. I said, what? Are you the one who bought the land? They said, no, we must not build. It was more political then. <laughs> I said, I'm not a politician. This is the church of God. They said, we will not build. I sent everybody to who is who. They said, no, you don't build. No way. Right, to make it worse, they now set up a team to bring down the fence. And they went there with armed teeth as if there was war. Nobody was at the side. Truck of military men. They went down there, brought down the entire fence. And I went to the place. I'm going to use to pray for you. I got to the place and I picked the pieces blocked. And I said, the same way this block broke, whoever issued this order, your life pieces. I dropped the block Thursday night. The young man who gave the order that they should bring the place down was coming from a night club. It's Friday, bring Saturday, motor hit him. Bah! He died on the spot. Then the one who said military men should go there slept that Saturday, did not wake up the following day. Two of them died. The place shook. Great, they called them Greater Padakwa then. Everybody was scared. I said, go there if you don't die. That is how they left us to build. I don't know who has threatened you. I don't know who is challenging you. As I'm standing here, God will pieces their lives. I said, God will pieces their lives. God will dash them to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Whoever say you will not enjoy your blessings, whoever say you will not live to enjoy your blessings, will die this weekend. Whoever say you will not enjoy what you labored for, will be struck with stroke. If you are a believer, say amen like a believer. Amen. So me, no devil can stop me from enjoying what God has given to me. Any agent of the devil who said no, say anything you like, say anything you like.
Jesus mighty name. You may be seated. Say God has given me victory. In Psalm 3, 9 and 10. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower paths of the earth. That means dead. Dead that they shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes. Dead that seek my soul to destroy it. Some people have said, I'll kill him. This is their last night. So I vowed to kill your own children. This is their last night. So I vowed that you will not enjoy what you labored for. This is their last night. The same thing they plan against you will befall them. In the name of Jesus. Why are we on the offensive, number three? To stop prolonged unpleasant situations and circumstances. To stop what? Unpleasant situations and circumstances. The part of the joys as a shining light that shines the multi perfect, the plural for a thing. We are to go from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. We are supposed to move from one level of glory to what? And we are with an open face, be only as in the glass. I change to the same image from glory to glory. You are supposed to be going like this from one level to life is supposed to be progressive. Anything making your yesterday better than today is an enemy. Shake up that prolonged stagnation by engaging the force of vengeance. As I have to do verse 2. He says, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose thyself from the bounds of the wicked over the neck. O captive daughter of Zion. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. What do you imagine against the Lord? He shall make an altar head. Affliction shall not rise the second time. Whatever evil you saw before you see it no more. That, if, that thing that has been legal, your family, nobody got married, your family, nobody is progressive, your life has been, any trouble you suffered before, you suffer it no more. Yeah. Say, I suffer it no more. Yeah. Every day, one trouble to another, it is ending today. Yeah. If that amen is from your heart, it will show. Yeah. From one case to another, from one trouble to another, from one problem to another, it is ending now. Yeah. Everybody in your family, nobody's getting married. It is ending now. Amen. That problem, your children, problem here, your children, problem here, it is ending now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That crisis is ending right now. Amen. And the one behind the crisis will pay. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Whoever is casting spell against you, I return it back to him. <laughs> Number four, which is the longest. Why offensive? To enjoy exemption from all forms of evil. To enjoy what? From all forms of evil. That's why you need a venue. Exemption is real. God exempted Israelites by executive vengeance on Pharaoh and the Egyptians. I'll show you the exemption of the Israelites enjoyed. The exemptions the Israelites enjoyed. A, we are still on number four, A. Stink and decadence. They were exempted from stink and what? The Israelites were exempted from all swarm of flies. This represents stench. It represents what? Stench and decadence. Stench. Have you not seen? They say this man is smelling. They don't mean physical smell. They say, I beg, we can go. Smelling man. That meaning nothing is showing in his life. In Exodus chapter 8, 22 to, 20 to 24, for time's sake, I'll read only 22. And I was severe in that day, the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, and no swarm of flies shall be there. To the end, that mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of thee. Anything happening in the world, there's decadence now. I decree you to be exempted. From all the stench in the world, today, I was just discussing one of the pastors who lives in the United States. He said the problem in America today is that every child wants to change their sex. He says it's not gay again, no, that is the problem now. Young boys want to be women. Small, small boys say they want to be women. That's the major problem in America. That is not normal. That is a decadence. 
young boys just on their own start taking hormonal drugs and say they want to become women. He says the biggest challenge now, gay is no longer a challenge. That one is not even a problem. The problem now is that children want to change their sex. I have not had the women want to be men. It's only men want to be women. I don't know why. <laughs> you hardly hear a woman wants to be a man. Even if they are there, they are very good. But boys, very many boys want to be women. That is not normal. It's something that is a decadence. It has turned some the world upside. You see, you see a boy wants to be a woman. He not do his hair like a woman. Be taking drugs, his breast will now come out. Is that normal? You should know that. When your child starts behaving like that, don't think it's normal. Though. It has turned to something. Today, I command such families exempted from such. Boy, you gave birth to John. All of a sudden, he said he wants to be married. <laughs> you know that's trouble. He said, boy, I don't want to answer the name John again. I want to answer the name Mary. Oh, boy, he said, I bought you like boy, you. He said, no, I want to be a woman. We'll be exempted from such now. Amen. Our children will be rescued from such. Amen. B, plagues and diseases. From plagues and what? While the Egyptians suffered pandemics, the Israelites were exempted. In Exodus 9, 8 to 11. But in 10 to 11. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up towards heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon men and upon beasts. Verse 11. And Mishas could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the Egyptians and upon all the Egyptians. But in Psalm 105 verse 7. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person amongst their tribe. Do you know, during COVID, all those who came to salvation means is not one had COVID. So it's possible to be exempted from what is happening in the world. At any plague that breaks out, because you can't stop from breaking out, but you will be exempted. I repeat, at the reach of my voice, no matter the plague, including the ones in the future, you will be exempted. If you believe the word of God, say I'll be exempted. From every plague. Now, that time they said, don't shake anybody. Me, I shoot people. One man of God came, did like this. I kept my hand in my pocket. I, I said, what, what kind of greed is that? He did like this. I said, me, greet you like this. My friend, bring your hand. Up. Come on. How can I have the hand of God and then this is enter me? They said, they even told me that I should use glass to talk to people. They said, put glass on. So I just... You'll be talking to the glass, make holes. I said, what nonsense is that? Some of you will come to church like they are masculine. They'll put something on their face and everything. Try church. <laughs> Me. That was when for, this church grew on, online. I was ministering. I used my hand on anybody. Why would they say, you shall lay hands on the sick. How can I lay down on the sick? Will recover? I will not say, Me, I'll be sick. Which kind of disease will enter me? I have eternal life. It's not permitted to enter me. And people were coming to church. Any plague in the land, you will be exempted. I said, so I'll be exempted. See, you be exempted from flood, destruction, and loss. You be exempted from what? The Israelites were exempted from diverse destructions. That is from hail, thunder, and fire. Hail implies flood, losses, destruction of properties. Exodus 9, 18 to 26. 18 to what? If you read 23, 24, and 26, and when stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail. And the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous. Such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt. But look at verse 6. Only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. It will be said no matter the situation that where you stay is the only place nothing happened. Amen. That amen is your own. Amen. I have no help to testify. Fire engulfed the whole hail there. Only my shop. Only what? They destroyed everyone. Only my own. I don't care the destruction. Your own will not be among. <laughs> I repeat, no matter the evil happening anywhere, you will be exempted. If you believe that destruction will not come near you, say amen like a believer. They will never rob your home. Fire will not engulf your house. If you believe it, say amen. The Unbearable confusion. Unbearable what? They were exempted from gross darkness, which connotes confusion. Exodus 10, 21 to 23. 
22 said, And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. But in verse 23, the son of one another, neither rose any from the place for three days. But in all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. No matter the confusion in the land, you will have direction. He untimely dead. They were exempted from the plague of death, which connotes untimely death. Exodus 11, 4 to 7. And 5 and 7, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sit upon the, his throne, even to the firstborn of the male servant that is behind the male, and all the firstborn of Eve is. But look at verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord had put a difference between the Egyptians and what? Israel. From today. No one at the reach of my voice will any untimely death come near our family. If you believe the word of God is real, say amen. amen. Say there shall be no dead. In all that concerns my family. Say it with faith. I will not die. My children will not die. Begin to mention, if you're a man, say, my wife will not die. My husband will not die. There shall be no untimely death. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. E, collapse of business. Collapse of what? Exodus 9, 3 to 6. Exodus 9, 3 to 6. In 4 and 6, verse 4, verse 6. And the Lord shall severe between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And the Lord did that which, did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But on the cattle of Israel, they died not. The cattle of Egypt died, connotes collapse of what? Businesses. Your business and career will not crash. Yeah. Say, my business, my, business. my, career, my career will never crash. Yeah. Say it in faith. If it's a ministry, say, the ministry will not crash. Call it. Say it. Call the ministry by name. It will never crash. Salvation ministry will never crash. There will be no collapse of this ministry. Thank you, Father. Finally, for this session, G. Hardship. God will exempt you. Now, due to devaluation, of money, there was so much hardship. But in Goshen, there was so much money. They never suffered any hardship. Rather, they lived in plenty. In Genesis chapter 47, 15 and 27. And when money failed, so money failing is not new. In the land of Egypt, and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Don't say you are suffering because none has been that valued. No, it's ignorance. It's not new. But look at verse 27. Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? And is it dwell in the land of what? Where did money fail? Where did money fail? Where did Israel dwell? In Egypt. In Egypt. But in a place. And he said, dwell in the land, the same Egypt. Look at your Bible. In the country of, there's the way you prosper, they call your place country. They call the redemption camp country. They call Canaan land country. They don't call Canaan land like as if they're in Nigeria. They say Canaan land. Redemption camp. They don't say redemption camp or good state. No. They call them as if they're a country. And they're really a country. Because whatever happens in the world does not happen there. Do you understand? And you, you know, when you're going to the airport, you look at that place, you know that it's a country. True? Okay. 
Money failed in Egypt, but money did not fail. Where the children of Israel were. Now listen, listen. I want you to pray with you. And Israel to the land of Egypt in the corner of Goshen. And they had what? Where did money fail? They had what? Remember, they were slaves there. Daring and grew up multiplicity. Money failing depicts economic crisis and hardship. He said, when men are cast down, then shall that say, there's a lifting up. Chapter 29. And it shall say, you know, it takes humility to confess that kind of thing. He said, if I say now, it is no hard. Who will come give me money? My friend, it is what you confess you possess. Say, no matter the hardship, I will never be a path. Say it and mean it. Say it from your heart. Say it and confess it. I will be accepted. If you believe it, say amen. I decree no matter the country you are in now, you'll be accepted from the hardship in that land. No matter what the world is going through, you'll be accepted in the name of Jesus. If God did it for Israel, he will do it for us. God will exempt us from all the woes in the land. The louder your amen, you have it done. Number five. Are you blessed? I'll close with number five and then we'll pray. Why should you be on the offensive? To enjoy all round rest and comfort. To enjoy what? Whatever thing that brings unrest and discomfort is not of God. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to comfort us through vengeance. Through what? Listen, many of you don't know the purpose of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you something. The dispensation of Jesus and the of the Holy Ghost, there are two dispensations. I'm going to read the scripture for religious people. Some people no matter how you preach, they still have religious mentality. They say, no. All this gospel David Bume is preaching is not the Bible. It's not the Bible. Before when are they preaching? If you know the Bible, I quoted it here. Everything I quote is not uh, as it goes to school, it's Bible. But you know that there are people who are so ignorant that when you preach this gospel, you say, No, no. Why do you say God should kill somebody who wants to kill you? I love God to live a life story. I don't know what turned me to one Christian television. And a man from South Africa was busy talking. It was for him to say, I'm talking about David Ibiomia. He said, there's a preacher in Nigeria who said, if you do something, retaliate. What do you think? What's your opinion? <laughs> One religious woman said she's a lecturer. He said, no, that pastor is not correct. When they deal with you, allow God to fight. I, I, it was a Christian channel. So I, I said, now I'm going talk about you. But well, because the Christian church, I don't know other ones I don't, I don't want to listen. I just I was laughing. So it's as if God was very funny. Then they asked him, they asked the woman she talked about then a man from America. <laughs> he said, Excuse me, can I say something? He said, Yes. I don't know how he, he told the man to speak. The man said, Listen, oh, if you do that in Nigeria, we don't do that here in America. <laughs> Are you saying that I have gone in my house and somebody come to molest my wife before me? I should leave him to rape my wife. Is that what you preach? <laughs> that I have gone. He's carrying gone. And he came to there. He said, he wants to rape my wife. He said, God, you fight for me. Is that how you preach? <laughs> my friend, I will shoot him. <laughs> he said, if that's the gospel you preach, please, that gospel is useless. Somebody will be molesting my wife before me. He said, God, you come and fight for me. When I have gone in my house, we don't do that here in America. Yeah, all of us carry on. I said, thank God. <laughs> he now was talking, he said, do you know they went to attack a church in Kaduna? He doesn't know my mentor very well. He said, a man called Oye Depo. I heard that they came out and fired. They said, yes. They don't go to that church to attack. Don't you know? In Kaduna, Kaduna. He said, don't go there because they were going to meet fire by fire. 
If that's the Christianity, I'm not part of it. I said, this man must be my brother. <laughs> my friend, stop fooling yourself. If your Christianity is when they match me, God go, they go, they go squeeze your leg. You may not even have leg to wear shoe. <laughs> if they slap me here, I go turn the other side. What if, if you don't have an allergic? <laughs> my friend, don't do that Christianity. Yo. Jesus died on the cross. You can't die again. The reason why he died is so you will not die. You now say you go die again. Are you, are you with Jesus? He has already died. So, okay. Let me tell you something. He went to the cross as a lamb. Came out of the cross as a lion. He went to the cross because he was to die for our sins. A lamb that was to be slaughtered. But he did not leave the cross as a lamb. He left as a lion. Lion does not spare meat. In this wicked world, you can't move with a lamp nature. This wicked world, he said, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Did they say the lamp of the tribe of Judah? In this world, in this world, you not do Christianity. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Amen. You know what survival? I will never preach that kind of gospel. Never. I like this gospel. You know why? He didn't suffer wickedness. If you have ever suffered wickedness, you will even do this you are doing. You don't, somebody don't show you, threaten your life. Then you say, Father, 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 Father. Somebody is threatening you. Okay, let me ask you naturally. You have gone. Somebody has gone. And you're seeing him coming to shoot you. You now keep your gun. <laughs> are you wise or stupid? Okay. Somebody has, is trying to kill you and you have the word of God to kill him. You say, you go keep him. You are very stupid. You are the most foolish person on earth. When you get to heaven, God will be asked, oh boy, I take on heaven. <laughs> I take on heaven. He says, so with all the things I gave to you, you cannot use them. You are like this man kill you. In fact, none of us will die. <laughs> that you are part of this message, it means you are not in that class. Okay, Isaiah chapter 61. This is the Holy Ghost. Look at one and two. Listen carefully. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. See there, you see, come there. This was where the ministry of Jesus taught. I'll show you from scriptures. That why command there is that this is where Jesus' ministry stopped. He came to redeem us from sin. You know where I know from? Turn with me to Luke. I'll come back here. I'll come back to this scripture. Come with me to Luke chapter 4, 18 to 20. Look at it. The spirit, you see it repeating this New Testament. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The same thing as I have. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to what? He has sent me to heal the broken heart. This is Jesus speaking when he opened the book. You remember in the temple from 16. To preach the deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set and liberty that priest. Jesus was showing. To preach the assembly of the Lord. This was where Jesus stopped. Is that true? You remember there? And he closed the book. He said, this is where my ministry stopped. And he gave it to the ministers and sat down. In the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fast. He said, this is my ministry. This is where I stop. But after I stop, Something will happen. Come back to Isaiah chapter 61. Look at verse 2. It's verse 2. The acceptable year of the Lord. This was where Jesus closed the book through. And what? That is where we are now. To comfort all that. We said, after I go, if it was when Jesus was there, Paul wouldn't have told the man to be blind. Jesus would have said, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Let, let him be repaired. But after he left, Paul said, this dispensation, no mercy. You want to mess me up? i mess you up. If it was the time of Jesus, Jesus would have agreed. He would have said, no, leave him, leave him, leave him. Because Peter just said, shall we call fire? He said, don't call fire. But Paul said, yo, uncircumcised elements, the blind. Please don't mistake that time to now. That one, people read the Bible, they don't understand the Bible. They say, no, Jesus, don't do so. Now, now, police have in Nigeria what they call operation fire for fire. 
they call them fire for what? Fire before the fire. In fact, operation what? Fire before the fire. That's, that's what it is. Sickness, diseases, unemployment, delay, stagnation, wickedness, name the all are devices of the devil and his agents to use to discomfort you. Tell me, is disease comfortable? A cling, 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 hand to mouth, comfortable? Somebody challenging you that you cannot sleep in the night, is it comfortable? In the time you used to sleep, you are bothering about somebody who is threatening your life. Is it comfortable? Yeah. Arm rubber shooting. Bah, bah. Is it comfortable? Yeah. But to enjoy all around comfort, vengeance is inevitable. All forms of mourning ends when vengeance of God is displayed. In Isaiah chapter 52 verse 9, it says, break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste place of Joseph. For the Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Joseph. When God comforts you, progress and rest is guaranteed. Your life and business, career begin to gain motion. Are you getting me? He says, I shall go before you and make the crooked places straight. Isaiah 43, 1 to 5, 1 to 3. Thus saith the Lord, the Lord to his anointed, to rise from his right hand and hold him, to subdue nations before him, to lose the loss of you, to, to open the, to, before you the two leaf gates, and the gate shall not be shut. I'll go before thee to make the crooked places straight. I'll break in peace the gates of our constant bars of iron. And I'll give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden in secret places. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will call thee by thy name and the God of Israel. Today, God will go before us. Amen. Strike every evil Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, but hear this before we go to pray. For vengeance to be executed in your favor, you are the one to provoke it in prayers. Not God. You are the one who provoke in the what? In prayers. If God must do vengeance now, you are the one who will say, God, this is what I want you to do. Not say God will do it. I will show you from scriptures. It is you that will this decree and God will confirm. Let me tell you a life story. I shared it, was it this morning or yesterday? Was it with yesterday? There was a young, notorious man. For those of you who are from other parts of the world, even Nigeria, this man was a notorious kidnapper. He was terrorizing the eastern part of Nigeria. Osikanko, that was his name, nickname. This man was terrorizing everybody. People were afraid to, to move within a bar and put a court. If you go, he will, his boys will stop. They were molesting women. They were attacking people. So one day he shot a staff working with us. The staff moved and I saw the bullet spray on the car <laughs> on a Thursday. The boy showed me, he said, sir, this is what happened. I said, who is the person? Before that, you know, they said, the man's name is Osikanko. I said, call his name again. He said, Osikanko. I came up here on a Thursday. I, I mean, if you enjoyed then. And I came up Thursday. I said, listen, I learned there's a young man called Osikanko terrorizing the nation at this area. I said, if Osikanko does not die by this weekend, I'm not sent. I sentenced him on Thursday by Friday was killed. I'm trying to tell you how to stir you up. Then there was a notorious boy in a place called Omoko, River State, Nigeria. They called his name Dawani. Dawani was a terror. And on the 31st night, he shot some people coming out from Fiji. And they told me, and they said, there's a young man, Dawani, kill Christians. And I was grieved in my spirit. And I stood up on the floor. I said, the one in seven days you are dead. Exactly the seventh day they killed him. Listen, it is not God who will do it. You will sentence the person. I'll show you from scriptures. A man was terrorizing everybody with occultic forces. He sent a message physically to me. He said, who am I? And I said, tell him he would die on his bed. The same week he had stroke and died with stroke. Listen, it is not God who would do it. Pharaoh said, if you don't let Moses, sorry, Moses said, if you don't let them go, you will bury your son. Did God confirm it? Okay. 
Now I'll show you from scripture. So I'll tell you to pray. You don't pray, oh God, do it. No, you will say it yourself. Not oh God, do it. You will say it. Isaiah 54. You know the scripture. Don't quote it. I'm going to show you. You know it. Knowing scripture is different from understanding scripture. Understanding is different. 14 to 17. In righteousness shall that be established. I'm going to give prayer points. We are going to pray. Today you will pray. In righteousness shall that be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together. So gather against you is not a problem. It's, it's normal. If you are going, they will gather. Don't pray. But, say, but not by whosoever shall gather against thee. Shall what? So gathering is not your business. They will fall from now. Yeah. Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coal in the fire and that bring it forth an instrument for his work. And I have created a waste of his soil. Now, all of, there's nobody who doesn't know the scripture, but you don't understand it. You know it, but you don't understand it. No weapon that is formed against thee shall what? This will of all stop. Every tongue that rises up against thee. What will happen? Who will condemn? Okay, then why are you telling God to do it? If you understand it. Oh God, kill them now. That's not prayer. I sentence everyone after me seven days. God do like this. Anyone that says I will not have peace, no peace. Anyone that wants to scatter my family, be scattered. Anyone that says I should not eat well, you do food, leave your mouth. It is not God, it is you that will declare, then God will confirm. That's why we miss it. Oh God, oh God, oh God. God said, What are you talking about? Moses cried to God, said, Shut up! What is in your heart? Stay, don't cry to me. Say something and I'll do it. Then he turned and said, The Egyptian, he said, Now you know. He was busy thinking that God would come down. He said, hey, Moses! He said, the Egyptians will see it to the God. He said, now you are right. You are, this one is different from, oh, God, do something. You know? Expectation form is where you say, God, do something. Judgment, prayer, you say something, then God will do something. Uh, if I never said, oh, sick and could die, oh, sick and could have been alive to today. Oh, God, kill him. Have you not heard that God is slow to, to the wicked? So you are the one that will provoke him. If you are waiting for God to kill the wicked, he won't kill them quickly. Because God is slow. He wants them to repent. So you will provoke him. You will do what? You will provoke him. If you are waiting for God to kill a wicked man, the wicked man will survive. I've not seen wicked people say, God, no one kill him. He leave him. Because you have not provoked God to kill him. God said, no, kill him. All. You provoke me. When you provoke him, he has no choice. So command me here, the work of my hands. At that point, you have told him, he said, ah, you are right. But if I say, God, why did they leave this wicked man? Go be the watch you. I've not seen wicked people who have been surviving. You said nothing. You are praying for God to kill them. God said, no, no, that's not how to pray. Give me a particular order. He said, command ye me. You know, we are so religious. God said, command you me. Tell me what I should do. You are saying, God, God, kill her now. God said, me. Stay there. Tell God I want this man dead by the end of the month. I want this man to have problem upon problem upon problem upon problem. Let me have peace. God will do it. Not God. I know now you go do more. If you like to kill him, kill him now. If you don't like, leave him. Is that prayer? My friend, calm down now. Bring it to verse 17. Bring 17 now to studio. Have you forgotten this verse before? No weapon for He said, Thou shalt what? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteous of me. So you are not righteous if you don't condemn. You are holy. You are what? He said, God is angry with the wicked. So the one he was angry yesterday is different from today. How many are ready to pray now? He said, Open your mouth. Why? And I will feel. He said, but my people are too civilized. <laughs> Arm robbers hit a man with gun in Lagos. And I said, sir, do you want me to pray the arm robbers die? He said, no. Pray that the arm robbers be born again. 
I looked at him, I said, sir, I will not pray. He said, why? I said, because the gospel I preach, I don't tell them robbers to repent. They came with God to hit your leg. God should hit them down. The man is not alive. Oh. One other one came. I said, do you want the people attacking you? He said, no. And I discovered that all those who said no, they are all dead. Because you are telling God not to defend you. So God, when they want to come, he said, well, you didn't tell me to fight for you. Therefore, I leave you to them. In case you came from that kind of background, where they told you when they slap you, I turn here. Please, before we pray, go home. <laughs> go what? But if you are here in glory rain for fire, then you are right. Jump to your feet. <laughs> Lift your right hand and say, Father, Father I, receive I receive grace to pray right. Anoint, Anoint my talk with fire, with fire. as I say it. That's how it will be. Everything I declare will be exactly as I declare it. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to give you prayer points. You take them systematically. The first prayer point number one. Is Satan you will attack. Because he's the master behind every evil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. <laughs> and by the words of the testament. Revelation 12 verse 11. And Zechariah chapter 9. 11, 12, 14, 15. As for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, you are set for the prisoner of the people where there is no water. Turn ye to the strong of you, prisoner of hope. Even to the declare, I will render double unto you. The Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go for as a lightning. That's talking about the blood of Jehovah. Blood! The blood. It says, you blow a trumpet. That means it will clear the whole year for you. It's if there be any evil in the year, it will clear it. You won't see any evil this year. He said, look at that. Don't think I said turn that. I'm not talking. He said, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as lightning. Are you seeing it? It will go as what? When lightning is coming, it will go. What? So that will go like this. He said, no way. I can't stand on this man's part. And the Lord shall be blow his trumpet, and it shall go like with wild winds in the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, so he will protect you and preserve you. I shall devour. It will kill anything that wants to kill you. Subdue as you stick stones. And they shall drink. And make noise. And so on and so forth. Now you are going to pray. Using the authority in the name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. Destroy satanic works against your life and affairs. Is there anywhere Satan you want to attack me or you have attacked me. The blood of Jesus is against you. Anywhere. You see the blood going like this. Ooh. Anywhere you have decided to attack my life. Anywhere you want to attack me, attack me, you, you know the things, my business, you want to attack our church. Are you ready? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. 
In the second prayer points, I'll give you four prayer points in number two. We have three prayer points I've arranged. But prayer point two, I'll have A, B, C, D. I don't want to combine them to come down to it. 2A. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, 38, 39, I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I have consumed them. I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. You are going to pray that God should pursue all kidnappers, assassins, armed robbers, hate killers, ritual killers, terrorists, and anyone with evil intention, including their sponsors, against your life and destiny until they are destroyed, never to rise again. Are you hearing me? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. I forgot to tell you to write Proverbs eleven nineteen b She put it. He that pursued evil possessed to his own what? Dead. I learned that butcher has become a frightful area. Now in the name of Jesus. We use a butcher as a point of contact for other parts. Everyone perpetrating any of these evils died this night. Everyone terrorizing Abuja and other parts of Nigeria and other areas, we command them, stroke in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they are making life uncomfortable for people, this night as they love dead, God pursue them. If you believe in say man like a believer. see such evil, there are people sponsoring them. You are going to pray. Pray that all their connections be brought down. All their what? All their connections be brought down. Psalm 89 verse 40. Thou hast broken down all his edges. Thou hast brought his strong. The people backing them. Bring them down. Are you ready? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. All their connections be broken. Every connection of the evil men be broken. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. All their connections be broken. Lakita, everything they have as connection be broken. In the name of Jesus. All their connections be broken now. Right now, in the name of Jesus.
<laughs> In Jesus' mighty name. Prayer point C. C2. Somebody threatened this church and threatened me with everything he had. <laughs> and I pray this prayer. Revelation 18 verse 17. For in one hour so great riches is come to north. You pray that all their sponsors should go into instant poverty. Instant what? I pray the grace the man was arrogant he became poor. From a multi-billionaire to poverty. He said, in one hour, he said, whoever is sponsoring this evil man, I command them to go into poverty. It is what you say God will confirm. One sickness can wipe away the wealth of the person. Lord, everyone sponsoring this evil people go into instant poverty. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Finally for this section before I go to the last prayer point. D. In Isaiah 19 verse 2. Take note. 2, 3a, 14a. Not the old 3. 3a, 14a. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And they shall fight everyone against his brother. And everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. Look at 3a. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. That is those charms they put will fail. The reason Osikanko was killed was because the spirit failed. The reason why that young boy will clean towel failed. Once you command the spirit that the car is failed, they will shoot in one gun. Mom, that's the end. And then verse 14. The Lord will mingle a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. If it's group A planning evil, group B will fight them. Pray that they fight themselves and command the spirit back in them to fail. Pray the fight. If you know the names, call it by name. Say, this person threatening me, the team backing you fail. You, you, be, you just be watching, they'll be fighting themselves. Now, life story, I'll give you a life story. Somebody threatening us, threatening this church. I say, what do I do now? I said, now, Lord, cause others to fight him. The day he planned to attack us, he had another group going for him. So we will just relax. So he was busy fighting with that group, fighting we were just watching. Anyone after you, let them fight themselves. All the court men who had not given us peace, they should fight themselves. If group A said they will not allow your community to have peace, and that group B will come fire them down. Are you ready? And the spirit back in them will fail. Go ahead in the name of Jesus.
Jesus mighty name. <laughs> the next prayer, I want to sit down for one second. I want to explain it. You pray to, this is what you pray for yourself. You are going to, you are the one to pray. That's what I tell you to sit down. Turn with me to Psalm 92 verse 11. Listen, I'm going to explain it to you. This, the part you are going to, this one is for you. You know the area. Because the prayer points you have prayed, one may not cover you. Psalm 92. Are you there? Okay. Shout hallelujah. It said, my eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. Take note. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. So you are the one who have the desire. Listen. It was my desire for Osikanko to die that weekend. That's why God did it. It was my desire that Don Wani must not exceed seven days. It was my desire that the man troubled me to go into poverty. A young man took upon himself in this country to want to trouble me. Every day on social media, he wanted to me. And I said, God, give him enough trouble. From the day I prayed to today, he has not come out of trouble. I said, that my desire was that since he doesn't want me to rest, Lord, give him sufficient problem. He has been having, they've locked him up, they've done, he is tired. Me, I'm here. What is your own desire? This one is not, okay, you will, dis as I say, sit down. So calm down, calculate. You know, they call it calculus in mathematics. My desire is that this person, this should happen. My desire is that this person, this should happen. My desire is that this should happen. You will desire, you desire my desire, not God. So you calm down for one minute, take time before you pray. You don't just get up, fada, fada. no, what is your desire? What do you want to hear about the person troubling you? What do you want to see? He said, my eyes shall see, my ears will hear. So you desire, I want to, me, I wanted the one that died the way he killed people. He killed people by shooting. I said, God, they, must, they showed his corpse to the public because that's how he messed up people's lives. So my desire that since he messed up people's life, God should mess him up. My desire is that everyone troubling me to the beginning, no peace. My own desire is not your desire. What's your desire? So, are you ready? How many are ready? If no desire, don't pray. It's not, oh God, make them die now. That is no desire. You will, desire. you will be very specific. My desire is that this person troubling me should not have peace again. So I can rest. My desire is that this person was foul to make my children useless should have this problem. My desire is that all the armed robbers tormented my village today to be buried one after the other. Are you ready? This one is your own prayer. It's your own what? My desire is that the community I live should have peace. That these boys who are notorious, call them by names if you know their names. These notorious boys, my desire is that this month end must not pass. They should all be dead. Rise to your feet. I will leave you for five to seven minutes. If you not, again, again, if you say, oh God, here, yeah, I'll come and drag you. <laughs> Your desire must be told God. You must tell God what you want. Are you ready now? You get angry. You get what? My desire is this thing must happen. In case you don't know, people, just say anyone planning evil against me, I, my desire is that everyone, whether I know them or not, Lord, give them confusion. So you can rest. This is the best way to rest. When they are having problems, you will rest. The best way of defense is to be on, on, on the offense. Are you ready? You know your desire now? I leave you for the next five minutes. Go ahead in the name of Jesus.
Sir. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. He said, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Not that that thing you are playing for God's life with God's word, it is granted in the name of Jesus. Yes. How many know God has answered? Do you believe it? Yes. You don't doubt it? Yes. Tell God thank you. Thank you for answering me. I will hear good news. My eyes will see it. My ears will hear it. In the name of Jesus. And in case you did not pray well, there's still another instrument which cannot fail. Psalm 149, 609. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a true edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and nobles with feathers of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This one of all the saints, praise the Lord. We are going to praise God for a few minutes. In case God does anything remaining, I don't know. As I praise you, take care. Execute vengeance. When Jehoshaphat and Judah and Judah praised God in 2 Chronicles 20, the Lord God of heaven set ambushment against their enemies and none escaped. 2 Chronicles 20, 22 to 24. None of our enemies will escape. You are going to dance for the next five minutes to so seven minutes. Anywhere, in case there's anything remaining, I don't know. Because of that, your prayer may not be too strong. You cannot, you may not pray well, but you praise, you praise well. You say, go fight my battle. Fight my battles. Fight my... Let me share something with your life story. Some gang up against me years back was thick. There are gang ups, you know that this is not normal. The gang up was so thick. Those were all members we know. It was a gang up of too many people. Press was there. Some politicians were there. Some pastors were there. Some occult people. It was a combination of heavy gang up. I was not at this level. <sighs> when I saw the gang up, I said, what is this? It, you know, they came and said, this man should be finished. And I locked myself inside the room. And I praise God. And I danced as if there was no tomorrow. They went then to report me to the, to the president's, vice president then. I said, lock this man up. It was that serious, that's rock. Went to the then uh, IG and reported my matter. Nothing, no. Nothing I did. Envy. And they said, lock him up. They felt if they lock me up, press will carry it. And the press carried to a front page news, that's the end of him. They said, lock him up. And they went Christmas Eve. So that if they report, they pick the person up and lock him. You know, you can't bail him for Christmas, you can't bail him to the six. So before they bail you, they've carried it. I had no idea. DSS was reported, this one was reported, this one was So <laughs> when I saw the thickness of the thickness, this level, you say, okay, but now if you try that, Nigeria will boil. That time, nobody. I've not this, but I had a weapon. 
So I shut the door. I said, Odoguna Yandikena. Odoguna. As I was praising God inside the praise, the dead IG said, Who do you say we should lock up? He looked at my picture, said, This man, I love him. He's not my pastor on television. Uh, I'm a Catholic, but this is my pastor. Call the poor who said we should lock him up. He said, DIG, lock three of them up. <laughs> the battle turned. That is how they le- And the person who led the team to hear this. <laughs> they, it was on phone. They called him and said, sir, why are you doing this? He said, no, we'll deal with your pastor. He was coming from aircraft. He collapsed on the tarmac and died. A journalist. Everybody left me alone. Don't think they leave me alone because they like it all. <laughs> if you don't praise here, you're not serious. Go down and say, God, I hand over this battle to you. Fight it for me. And let's see God fight. Are you ready for that kind of praise? This kind of praise, you don't do like this. You go down, you come up, you go down, you know. Have you met children? When he said, Gino, dance, I'll give you chocolate. He said, Gino, dance where? You are dancing for God to fight. He said, God, this battle is not, is now over to you. Over what? Let me give you an illustration that will give you a picture. In a wrestling competition, you see two people in the ring. Can you picture it? Can you picture a wrestling competition? Now, somebody will be outside. They call it tag team partners. The man outside is your partner. Then somebody inside is the opponent. Now, when the fight is, you cannot carry again, you do like this. The man comes in. Is that true? When the man comes in, if he beats the man, who gets the belt? Two of you. Now, your partner is God. Satan is in the ring with his agents. Just use praise and tap God. Use praise and do what? Then you step up. God steps in. At the end, the belt comes to you. That's all. That's what you're about to do now. You're saying, God, come inside the ring. This fight is for you. Take over my fight. Watch what will happen. Are you ready? Look, all, all centers. But this one is glory ring, so I don't think you have instruments now. It's not church. Heavy choir, no entertainment. Heavy praise. We praise for seven minutes. Watch what will happen. Are you ready? Let's go. We serve a God who never fails. We serve a God. Holy. Now, if I ask you, what are you praising for? You must have a picture. You must know what you're praising. Lord, I'm praising you to fight my battles. Visible or invisible. Go ahead. We serve a God. Go ahead. We serve a God who never fails. We serve a God who never fails. Who never fails. He can never ever fail. We serve a God again. We serve a God. He can never ever fail. We serve a God who never fails. We serve a God who never fails. 
take over my battles. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. By this praise, take over all the battles. Call the name of your company. Take over every battle. Call the name of the ministry on yourself. Professor, Lord, take over my battles. In the name of Jesus. Now that God has taken over our battles, He will beautify our lives. But hear this. In 2 Chronicles chapter 13, we are going to do something prophetic. 13 to 15. And Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them, so they were before Judah. An ambushment was behind them. Look at verse 14 carefully. And when Judah looked back, and behold, the battle was before and behind. Have you ever seen where you look forward? It's as if there's trouble. You look back, there's trouble. Have you ever experienced such before? And they cried unto the Lord, and the priest sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave what? What did they do? And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. You will give God a shout. You will shout, hold it, hold it. You will not just shout, you say, if not, hallelujah, you will say, hallelujah. You say, God, by this shout, battles before me, battles behind me, smote them. You say, when you say, hallelujah, you shout hallelujah from your heart. You don't just shout anyhow. You say, ha, hallelujah. You give God a shout of victory. What is the shout of victory? Hallelujah is a shout of victory. It's a universal language. In Hebrew, it's hallelujah. In English, it's hallelujah. In your language, it's hallelujah. Hallelujah has no interpretation. Hallelujah is what? Hallelujah. So that's the universal language. You are going to shout it, not just shouting for fall. Shouting for victory. Battles before, battles behind. By this shout, scatter them. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. <laughs> to rest. God will give everyone genuinely according to the service rest from now. Amen. That battle is 